So you've been thinking of moving to Kitchener, Ontario, but you're not sure which neighbor is good for you. And you want to know a little bit more about some of the great neighbors we have here in Kitchener. Well, stay tuned. That's what we're going to talk about in this particular video. I'm going to break it down some of the great neighbors we have here, both the good and the bad of each of those neighborhoods. And we're going to cover everything, whether you're looking for luxury, whether you're looking for a starter home, or whether you're looking for like, you know, mature and well-established neighborhoods. So let's stay tuned and we're going to get after it right now. If this is your first time through this channel and you want to know everything about living in Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo and the surrounding areas, well, you can subscribe below and tap on the bell for notification so you can be the first to learn about the current market in Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo and the surrounding towns. My name is Dharmik Digzit. I'm a local real estate agent serving Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo and the surrounding areas. I do get calls, texts, emails from people just like you and you and you and you looking for help in making their move to Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo and the areas and I absolutely love it. Whether you're thinking of moving in 9 days or 90 days, you can give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. All the information you'll find in the description below. More than happy to help you make a smooth move to Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo and the area. So right now I'm in the sports world crossing area of Kitchener, Ontario. Basically you are at the border of Kitchener and Cambridge as you head from 401 and you know basically this is the King Street if you head further down, you're going to hit Highway 8, you know, merging further down in Kitchener. And if you head this way, that's where the 401 is. But yeah, one thing, you know, as you can see right behind me, this is actually a pretty good place. One thing I wanted to talk about is some great shopping options you have. This is, a, you know, that cluster of Kitchener. You'll find a lot of, uh, you, know, you know, great shopping options. We have obviously Nike store you guys saw right behind me. But, you know, as you can just head down from the street uh, in the sports world crossing, uh, there are a bunch of, you know, big box stores, even the Kitchener Costco is here. Uh, you know, Hockey Life, uh, right across the street we have the Brick. And, of course, some great places to eat. The Borealis is great, a very local place, uh, some great apps and great drinks. So be sure to check it out if you're ever here. But also we have Moose Minuskis, which is, you know, right down the street as well. Uh, like I said, some great options we have in dining and shopping here, you know, right as you enter in Kitchener. But what we're going to do is, you know, I'm going to jump in my car and head down to the first neighborhood, which is not too far from here. And, you know, you can stay with me and we're going to get after it right now. All right, so I'm at my first stop here in Pioneer Tower West, also known as the unofficial name of Deer Ridge here in Kitchener, not too far from where I was in the Sports World Crossing. So you have great shopping options at your doorstep, you know, pretty much any part of this neighborhood. You're about, uh, you know, five minute drive to Highway 401, maybe less than 10 minute drive to Highway 8 if you head down to Kitchener. So that's the best part of it. It's a commuter's dream to be close to highways. So you major highways at the doorstep. At the same time, some great shopping. Uh, you know, Costco is nearby. Uh, at the same time, some other, you know, home and furnishing stores, as well as some great dining options, which we mentioned. Borealis, Moose Minuskis, Piper Arms, some great bars are nearby. And of course, you can always head down to Highway 8 uh, to the Fairway Road which is the next exit heading down further west on Highway 8. And that will take you to the region's biggest mall, uh, Fairview Park Mall. And, you know, even on the Fairway Road South, you will see plenty of other shopping options and other big box stores as well, uh, outside of the mall as well. Thing to keep in mind about this neighborhood, if you are going to rely on public transport, keep in mind Pioneer Tower West is not very famous for uh, public transit. It's not as accessible. But at the same time, uh, you know, schools are the same thing. Not a, you know, there are not a lot of public schools here in this neighborhood. I don't think there is any high school uh, in this neighborhood. I'm not sure about the elementary. There might be one elementary school to what I know, but definitely not a, not, not a single high school. So, but I would suspect that a lot of people and the households living in this neighborhood would tend to rely on the private transportation as well as for schooling. They would be sending their kids uh, more so to the private schools. Uh, you know, just looking at the homes behind me, you know, that should, you know, you should be able to see like, you know, this pretty much does define the caliber of this neighborhood. Uh, you know, average price point of the real estate currently in this neighborhood 
is well over $1.5 million with the listing, which is one of the highest price currently active listing is at $4.5 million home. You can see right behind me, uh, I'll give you, you know, this is the one I'm talking about. This one is a six bed, nine washroom, 5,000 square feet build out and, you know, sitting on just over half an acre, uh, you know, property. So you can see just the width of the house here. That should tell you a bit about the lot. And you know, that does actually define a lot of homes here and this neighborhood. A lot of homes are actually built on acreages, uh, especially as you get closer to the river, uh, you will see, uh, you know, homes sitting on an average lot size of well over 10,000 square feet with the build out at least like, you know, close to that 3000 square feet mark. So, uh, and what I'm gonna do is as I head down and drive further in the neighborhood, you will get to feel uh, a bit more about the neighborhood and what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, just also what attracts a lot of people in this neighborhood is the fact that there is a members only golf course right here in this neighborhood. It's called Deer Ridge Golf Club. And that's what attracts a lot of people to this neighborhood and some of the region's most affluent people to the neighborhood. And that pretty much does define the lifestyle of the Pioneer Tower West, the Deer Ridge, uh, you know, whatever you call it. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a little bit to note. And also like you will see a lot of uh, great parks hiking trails going throughout this neighborhood, which is another great plus point. If you are someone looking, you know, enjoying outdoors, this neighborhood is perfect for you because there are a lot of great trails just going around the Grand River as well as throughout the neighborhood. The Deer Ridge Park is one of the great places, a lot of great hiking spots as well. But at the same time, throughout the neighborhood, you will find plenty of green space just in your backyard. I mean, <laughs> you know, when you have almost 10, over 10,000 square feet lot, you could literally just enjoy outdoors in your neighborhood. You don't need to even go anywhere. But just in case you do like to hang around like a lot of people in this neighborhood, I can tell you, you will find a lot of great uh, hiking spots within the neighborhood without having to drive uh, pretty much anywhere else, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back in my car. We're gonna drive into this neighborhood so you get to see different homes and the caliber of the homes in this neighborhood. And I'm gonna meet you at my second destination, which is gonna be the second neighborhood. And let's get after it right now. So here we are at the second spot. This is the Huron Natural Area, basically in a Huron Park neighborhood of Kitchener, Ontario. And, you know, just to tell you a bit about the neighborhood, but before that, I'll actually pause for a moment and tell you a little bit about this Huron Natural Area. You're actually looking at over 250 acres of uh, green space, you know, forest, meadows, and the creeks. So if you're into hiking, biking, you know, being outdoors, uh, you know, going for even a walk, I can tell you, this place from anywhere in Huron South or Huron Park area will be typically less than like 10 minute drive uh, to this place. So a lot of people living in this neighborhood actually do, you know, enjoy outdoors, uh, you know, uh, hiking and biking. There are actually three hiking trails in this natural area and some great spots actually to take some photos, spend some time, even picnic, uh, you know, uh, being out and about, right? That's what it is. So, you know, talking about a bit of a real estate side of it, uh, this neighborhood, uh, Huron Park used to be an industrial park back in days. So literally there was no residential construction. Uh, it's kind of in the early 2000s that the construction, you know, started popping up for residential homes. And, you know, if you find the oldest construction in this neighborhood will date back to 2005 and, you know, somewhere around that. So if you are someone who is looking for like, you know, that suburban neighborhood in Kitchener, while being close to Highway 401, uh, you're not too far off, you know, uh, but at the same time, you're close to, you know, some great green space, uh, you know, kind, kind of that quiet suburban feeling uh, and kind of that kind of a lifestyle. I can tell you, you know, Huron Park will not disappoint you, uh, especially as you go further down south is where you will find Huron South is the area where you will find a lot of uh, newer construction happening. And at the same time, when it comes to public transit, just keep in mind, it's not the greatest here. So, you know, if you are, you know, living in this neighborhood, 
you know, you would be better off, you know, uh, using pub, private transit, basically you're driving yourself or, you know, someone driving you uh, to get around in this neighborhood. It's not one of the most uh, accessible, but, uh, you know, as I said, the residential and the industrial part of Huron Park is divided through this Huron natural area where we are right now. So on one side, you have all residential, especially the newer developments, which are still happening. Uh, you will find a lot of new constructions. When it comes to the price points, you're actually looking at, you know, freehold townhomes ranging to that six, 650, uh, you know, range. And as you get into like a single garage detached, typically ranging like 1500 square feet and around that, you will be looking at, you know, the price point of like 800,000 and around that. But as you go bigger, there are some, you know, double garage detached as well. That will take you like, you know, kind of in that, you know, uh, you know, close to that million dollar mark. So it's uh, it's a bit chilly here and I'm, you know, I'm getting a bit of a cold. Uh, but, you know, just to tell that's that's to tell you a bit about this neighborhood. Like I said, ideal for those families looking for that suburban, quiet living while being close to the highway, as well as some of the major amenities like groceries and everything. And of course, being close to the green space. So Huron Park. And if you're looking for a newer construction, more importantly, this is probably one of the best bets. There are actually a couple of other neighborhoods, which I'm going to jump into my car and show you the next one, which is next door, Dune South. But just while we're talking about this, uh, what I'm going to do now is actually jump back in my car. We're going to drive down to the neighborhood so you get to see what I'm talking about in terms of different homes that you will find here. The diversity of construction you will find in this neighborhood is pretty good. You will find like some condominium townhomes. Uh, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200, like some going up to 1,400. And then you'll find single garage detached, 1,500 square feet and around that. And then you'll find double garage detached close to 2,000 square feet and up. But you will not find a lot of apartments. You will not find a lot of condominiums. Like I said, this is kind of that suburban, you know, quiet setting lifestyle. So that's, you know, that's what attracts most people to, you know, that kind of a lifestyle in this neighborhood. So... Uh, let's, you know, get to my car and, you know, I'm going to drive around and show you the neighborhood and then I'll meet you at my third neighborhood, which is going to be Dune South. So let's get after it right now. All right, so here we are at our third spot, and this is the Dune South neighborhood. Again, another very highly desirable neighborhood for those looking to settle down very close to Highway 401 while looking for a newer construction and a new neighborhood. Well, this is your answer to that in Kitchener, Ontario. Dune South is again further down south from the Huron Park, Huron South area. We are kind of on the southwest end of, uh, you know, Kitchener. And you're very close to Highway 8 as well. If you're going to head to further down to Kitchener, you're, you know, through Homer Watson, you can get to Highway 8 easily in like, you know, five to seven minutes drive. But the best part of this neighborhood is most of the homes here are new. You'll find a lot of modern contemporary homes. There are still a lot of active builders. One of them is Ridgeview Homes, who is pretty active in this neighborhood. They still have homes like, you know, you can find something brand new. Or you can find something ideally like, you know, not more than five to seven years old in this neighborhood easily. The other thing to note about this neighborhood is the, you know, different options for the constructions. So, and different price points. So, whether you're looking for that starter home, uh, there are condo townhomes here in this neighborhood in Dune South. You can find some semi-detached homes, not too many, but you will find a few. And then mostly a lot of them are detached homes. Uh, you know, ranging anywhere from, you know, more than 1,500 square feet all the way to, you know, 3,000 square feet and up. So that's a little bit about it. Another great point to note about this neighborhood is the fact that, you know, you have a lot of green space all around you. There are about like 30, you know, public green spaces within this neighborhood itself. So if you are like me, you know, like being outdoors in the green, hiking and biking and those things, well, I can tell you, this neighborhood will not disappoint you 
but uh, you know just look at the trees right behind me like for example this one right and you can see all along it you know that tells you a little bit about the subdivision and this neighborhood you know when i say it's very newly built because what happens is typically when the builder actually you know builds a subdivision they will always bring everything to the ground and level it and then they will actually build you know everything from ground up so right from the landscaping and everything is brand new you can see the trees right behind me and that goes for every neighborhood you know when you go in an established neighborhood you will see the trees actually are well matured and you know not not as young as this ones so that's a bit about this neighborhood but like i said it's a commuter's dream pretty much almost the closest access you could get arguably in kishner while staying very close to 401 so if you ever have to commute down to visit friends or family or work i can tell you Dune South is probably your best bet and you can get a newer construction. Keep in mind the price points here do are like you know tend to be a bit pricey partly be, de, because of the fact that you know you are getting a newer construction also due to the fact that you're close to highway 401 and you know you're in a very new you know newly established neighborhood of Kitchener Ontario. So that's a little bit about it but like I said uh, you know Piron South as well as Dune South these are the two neighborhoods here in Kitchener will give you newer construction while being close to some of the great amenities and highway and the green space. So what we're going to do is I'm going to head back in my car. I'm going to drive around the Dune South neighborhood. Really good homes, like I said, some really modern contemporary designs that you will find here in this neighborhood. Obviously, the price points do vary all the way. Like there's a two bedroom condo townhome here that's listed for just around 500,000. All the way to some of the you know modern contemporary detached you see are you know well close to two million dollars so that's the diversity of the construction and price point no matter what your price point is i can tell you you can find something in dune south so let's head into my car and i'm gonna drive around the neighborhood to show you around and i'm gonna meet you at my next neighborhood so let's get after it right now All right, so I'm now in the next neighborhood, which is Stanley Park. Today is my day to actually hang out in the green. I don't mind it, to be honest, because it's not too bad, not too chilly. At least it's not windy, so I can tolerate it. But yeah, so I'm actually in the Stanley Park neighborhood. This is your spot in Kitchener. Something you can consider, especially if you're actually looking for something that's, you know, mature and well-established compared to what we have seen earlier in a couple of uh, different neighborhoods we saw previously. Uh, unlike that, Stanley Park will give you, you know, homes dating all the way from war times all the way to like 70s. So you will not find, you know, a lot of uh, newer constructions here, but uh, a lot of homes here are kind of those bungalow style. You'll find, you know, a little bit of side splits, back splits, those, you know, bungalow style homes, you know, basically with the wider lodge where you will see majority of the living space you know scattered around on the same floor so that's a bit about stanley park we are kind of on the northeast end of 401 and highway 8 so ideally you know you're in a close proximity to both the major highways connecting kitchener depending on which side you have to go and commute uh, you're close to that and also the fact that it is very well established and mature gives you a close access to you know all the day-to-day -day major amenities like groceries you know local shopping that you need on a day-to-day -day basis i can tell you like you're very close to those things uh, also public transit is not too bad here it does have a really good transit network uh, some of the major street within the neighborhood will take you to major spots uh, fairway you know fairway road like the fairway park mall is not too far off if you have to do shopping you know uh, that you can always jump and head down there or you know to do some outdoor stuff and indoor stuff with kids some great spots around here would include uh, you know Bingman's right, right off the Victoria Street so you jump off to Victoria and the other side you have Bingman's uh, which is a great uh, amusement you know activity center for kids and you know adults alike uh, plenty of things to do there you can check out 
But at the same time, Chicopee Tube Park, if you're on the outdoor adventure or a ski person in winter, I mean, it's an all season uh, open park. They have summer activities as well, uh, you know, tubing, uh, skiing in winter, obviously. But yeah, a great place uh, to hang out or also close by. And like I said, you get the best of both worlds. You get that well established and mature neighborhood uh, feel while being close, you know, to major highways, uh, major amenities and some great uh, things to do outdoors as well. So that's a little bit about the Stanley Park. So one thing to consider while if you're considering Stanley Park is that, you know, unlike some of the other neighborhoods, considering the fact that it is mature, you will find parts of Stanley Park neighborhood where, you know, you will find a lot of uh, high rise, older apartment buildings, most of which are rentals. And there are other parts more close to the Stanley Park and kind of, you know, secluded uh, away from the, you know, major streets and Highway 7, where you will find, you know, most of the bungalow style homes, uh, which are away from those rentals. So, you know, the parts of about 60, 40 ratio, I would say, uh, as per the realtor.ca, when it comes to rentals versus owned uh, real estate here in Stanley Park. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're picky about, you know, being in a neighborhood where you don't want any rentals or not a lot of rentals. Well, Stanley Park may not be the best option for you. But hey, you know what, you're, you know, you, you have the best of both worlds. Uh, you know, you got close access to highway, uh, you know, close to major amenities. Also, while, you know, being in the kind of, you know, serene suburban space, uh, that's the best part of Stanley Park. And, you know, to be honest, there are actually people who will actually like the, you know, bungalow style living, right? Uh, it's a kind of lifestyle. And, you know, the fact that you're all the living space in one, you know, one end, you will see that the layout does make a lot of difference. Even that 1,500 square feet home, when all this living space is, you know, on the one floor, you will find it much bigger compared to, you know, we see oftentimes in some of the newer homes uh, where, you know, it's kind of divided between, you know, the two floors or, you know, two stories or sometimes even three stories in townhomes. But yeah, that's a little bit about it. I'm going to jump into my car here and, you know, we're going to hang around in the Stanley Park. I'll show you the homes, uh, you know, the, the bungalows and some of the older homes that I'm referring to. So you'll get to see what that neighborhood looks like and you get a decent feel of it. And let's get after it right now. All right, so wanted to make a quick stop, guys, in the Stanley Park. Obviously, saw some homes, but, you know, a couple of things I wanted to mention real quick is, you know, a lot of people, let's say if you're in search of uh, looking for a bigger lot, uh, bungalows, and, you know, you're looking for a rundown property that you can basically bring it down to the ground and, you know, convert it into like a modern contemporary homes of these days. Well, Stanley Park will definitely give you some great options there. I mean, just look at the house right behind here. That's the one is a classic example of that a lot of homes you might have seen as i was taking a tour in the neighborhood as well a lot of homes in this neighborhood are actually like that where people will actually bring it down to the ground or you know may go through homes will go through a major major renovation before people will move in but hey you get a bigger lot which is a big plus and you get to build your own home so a lot of people find that interesting and you know have the, the capacity and the capital to do that so stanley park will give you that option the other thing I wanted to point out is, you know, when I say about mature and established neighborhoods, you know, I wanted to point out the trees and you can see some of the trees here in the along the streets, you'll find very well mature, uh, like, you know, compared to what we saw earlier in Dune South and you might notice in Huron South as well. So those are a couple of quick things I wanted to point out. I uh, hope you get, did get some value. I'm going to head back in my car and, uh, you know, we're going to get to the next neighborhood, which is ideal if you're looking for a starter home while being close to everything. Let's get after it right now. All right, so I'm here at my next stop. This is the Alpine neighborhood here in Kitchener, Ontario. And this neighborhood is, you know, the one for you. If you're someone who is looking for like starter homes, ideally looking to get started, you know, get your foothold into the housing market. I can tell you this is the neighborhood as well as the Laurentian Hills, which is adjacent to this. These are the couple of uh, great spots to get you started with something in the real estate. Uh, you will find a wide variety of, ho of homes here, uh, you know, ranging from bungalows, you know, in different styles like back split, side split, raised bungalows, as well as like, you know, condominium townhouse, see, like the one you see in the back. And, you know, as at the same time, you'll find, uh, you know, semis and the detached as well. So 
it's you know a little bit of everything the data construction that we find here is kind of the you know the downside of this particular neighborhood you will not find anything new as such uh, not a lot of newer construction that's happening especially when it comes to homes uh, but you will find homes like half of them pretty much built between 60s and 80s and the other half built between 80s and 2000s but you will not find a lot of construction that happened after 2000 in this couple neighborhoods but on the positive side yes you will find you know lower than average price point in Kushner compared to some of the other neighborhoods we saw earlier and at the same time you'll also find very yourself very close to some of the great amenities uh, even if you have you know to commute by public transit the connectivity is great uh, you know schools shopping grocery is you know you can almost say it's like the walking distance not ideal for biking for sure because you know these two neighborhoods are kind of on the hilly area uh, around the McLennan Park which used to be you know an old landfill site later on rehabilitated it's a must check out now if you're ever in this neighborhood it's a great park uh, with some outdoor space so that's the best part of Kitchener pretty much every you know neighborhood you will find you know some green space to hang out uh, you know if you're into that but you know again <laughs> I'm coming back to the trees you know when I say the mature neighborhood like 60s and 80s just look at the trees right behind me like that should tell you how old this neighborhood is. It's not something, you know, that's that's built within the last 10, 20, 30 years. So that's a little bit about it. But like I said, the price point, you know, you will find, a, you know, like something for you to get started with into that 500,000 range, like a small uh, corner town, all the way to like, you know, close to seven, 800,000 for those bungalows, depending on the lot size. You will not pay a lot for the build out here because a lot of construction is older but you will more so pay for the lot size and like I said you have close proximity to Hiva 7 as well as there's a shopping mall uh, shopping center actually not the mall but uh, Sunrise Plaza which is actually the nearest shopping center you'll find some big box stores there like you know everyday shopping that's the closest you have Walmart there for your groceries if you have to do there but like I said pretty much every amenity is very close to here and that's the best part of it public transit is very close so you know accessibility and the affordability are the two great points for this neighborhood but the downside not a lot of new construction so that's a little bit about you if you are in market for like a starter home to get you started alpine and laurentian hills are the couple spots you can consider i'm gonna head around in my car kind of you know give you a tour of the neighborhood uh, which you will find pretty interesting uh, looking at the diverse uh, type of homes you see here just like how i mentioned in stanley park the other thing to note is You'll find a little bit of, you know, homes which are rented out versus some properties which are owned and occupied, owner occupied. So that's a little bit of mix of both. Actually, you'll find some rentals, some owner occupied. So, yeah, that's another thing to keep in mind. You won't find this community to be completely owner occupied properties. So that's just it about this neighborhood. I'm going to head back to my car and we're going to drive to this neighborhood. And I'm going to meet you at my final spot, which is going to be about the best schools you can find in Kitchener, one of the top neighborhoods, you know, highly rated for some great schools. So hang on and we're going to get after it right now. Okay, so we are at the final stop here. This is Highland West Beechwood Forest neighborhood of Kishner. You're kind of on the northwest end of Kishner, pretty much bordering Kishner and Waterloo at this point. And I'm here in the Monarch Woods Trail, which is actually a you know, hiking trail right in this neighborhood. Pretty decent trail, nothing too challenging, nothing too difficult. Even if you wanna just take it a stroll, uh, you know, pretty good trail to just uh, hang out and enjoy some open outdoor green space so uh, yeah that's a little bit about it but at the same time as I said earlier this you know this community is actually very well known for you know its access to some of the great schools uh, not just in Kitchener but in the Waterloo region so I'll get right into it you know in terms of elementary school your options would include Sand Hills Public School you will have St. 
Dominic Savio, uh, which is a Catholic school, elementary as well. And then you have, I think there is one more school. Which one is it? Uh, yeah, the John Darling uh, Public School, which is again another elementary school. So those are the three elementary schools. In terms of high schools, you do have Resurrection Catholic School just within the neighborhood at the border of University Avenue. Uh, that is actually, all those schools are actually one of the, you know, highly ranked uh, by the Fraser Institute um, as one of the top schools in Kushner. But in terms of high schools, in case you're wondering, you know, if there is just a Catholic school, I have to tell you that, you know, within this neighborhood, you will get access, depending on what part of neighborhood you are, you will get access to, you know, some of the greatest schools in Waterloo, just at the border of Kitchener, Waterloo, in the Laurelwood area, Sir John and McDonald, as well as the Laurelwood Public School, you would have access to it through the, you know, school bus uh, service. So, yes, if you're in this neighborhood, again, depending on where you are in the neighborhood, you could potentially get access to those schools and you, you, you could send your kids to those schools. But uh, that's a little bit about it. I'll touch upon the shopping options. You have a couple of great spots right at the doorstep. The boardwalk, which is in Waterloo, is almost at your doorstep here, which is an outdoor strip mall. Uh, lots of shopping options there, as well as the dining options. While on the other side, you have Sunrise Plaza, which is again an outdoor strip mall, uh, where you have Walmart, some of the big box stores, and some local shopping options as well, which is again, just a short drive down further east, um, you know, along the Highway 8. So that's a couple, little bit about shopping, but if I were to talk about the dining options, you, you know, keep in mind, you are just as close to Uptown Waterloo, uh, as well as the, you know, university area in the Waterloo. Living in this neighborhood, it'll be at the most like 10 minute drive to those spots and where you have like plenty of uh, dining options, some great local store, uh, you know, dining, dining options, which you can check out some great breweries, uh, you know, cafes and other places to hang out, obviously around the university area. So that's, that's the best part about this neighborhood. You will get the best of both towns, not just the, you know, the Kitchener, but the Waterloo as well, while having access to some great schools within the region, not just Kitchener. Uh, that's another great part of it. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, people living here, it's kind of that suburban, you know, quiet living away from the hustle and bustle while being close to the highway. Highway 8 is not too far from here. You are kind of, uh, you know, a little bit like about five minute drive within this neighborhood, living in here, Highland West, five minute drive down to Iron Needles, getting you further down on Trussler Road, which then does connect you to Highway 8 going east or west, depending on where you're heading to. So that's a little bit about it. Uh, in terms of real estate, uh, you know, I can touch upon that. Most of the construction here is kind of late 90s, early 2000s. There are some homes we will find built in 80s. But majority of that new construction happened in the early 2000s. So you will not find something completely brand new, but you will find something just decent enough, you know, within, you know, 15 to 20 years age uh, within this neighborhood. And, you know, the housing, you know, re real estate, uh, you know, stock here would include, uh, you know, every, everything from, uh, you know, condo towns, freehold townhomes. Uh, we have some semis, not too many. And then we have, a lots of detached homes as well so it's a little bit of everything depending on what your price point or what what is that you're looking for i can tell you this neighborhood could potentially offer you that so that's a little bit about it in you know about the highland west and the beechwood forest at the end of the day the top neighborhood is a subjective topic and for everyone depending on what you're looking for and you know what's your budget what's your lifestyle uh, what stage of life you're in it could be different right you might be looking for great schools great uh, access to highway or you might be looking for luxury real estate so before i end this video what i'm gonna do is head back in my car and show you around in this particular neighborhood also some of the schools that we talked about so you get to see them up close and personal to get a good feel of it at the same time if you did get some value of this video well be sure to subscribe below and tap on the bell for notification so you can be the first to learn about the current market in kishner cambridge and waterloo once again whether you're thinking of moving in nine days or 90 days, be sure to give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email. More than happy to help you make a smooth move to Kishner, Cambridge, Waterloo and the surrounding towns. Until next time, I do hope to show you around town.